Life Audio. You're listening to Therapy and Theology, and I'm your host, Carly McClear. This podcast is a space where we explore popular topics and questions related to the convergence of faith, feelings, spiritual formation, and more. My prayer is that through these conversations, we will grow in our awareness of who we are as beloved children of God, learn to acknowledge our needs and emotions with curiosity and compassion, and rediscover the purpose and power of our unique stories through the lens of the gospel. As a licensed therapist and ministry leader, I want to give voice to the many questions we face while cultivating a clearer view of how our faith informs our healing journey. I don't have all the answers, but I am committed to going deeper and walking together. So whether you've been to therapy or know exactly what you believe when it comes to theology, I want to invite you to join this journey as we fearlessly name the complexities of our present reality and press into the hope of the gospel story. So are you ready? Let's jump into today's question and begin this journey together. Hi, I'm Zach. And I'm Randy. And we're from Salty Saints Podcast. We're a theology and apologetics podcast. We hope to better equip you to be salt and light for your community. Uh, We hope that we can help you to go out and be a reflection of Jesus Christ to those around you, uh, to your friends and your family, and especially to those that do not know Christ. To find out more, subscribe at lifeaudio.com. Hello and welcome back to Therapy and Theology. I hope you are enjoying the first few weeks of 2023. I don't know about you, but the start of this year has just been so busy and so full. I love to reorganize and refresh and start recreating my concepts for this year. But at the same time, there is such a need for rest and pause and reflection. And so thankfully, this past weekend, I was so blessed to spend some time with my church family on a leadership retreat. And so I thought I would just share some reflections from that as we enter into this next episode of our series on Rhythms Over Resolutions. Now, as I drove into the mountains of Virginia this weekend on this retreat, I just kept thinking of the invitation of Jesus to come and find rest for my weary soul. This invitation is not just for physical rest, but also for a deep sense of security for my soul. Stepping into this new year, there's so much uncertainty. And my prayer has been that I would anchor myself in these rhythms of rest that repeatedly bring me home to a God who sees me, cares for me, and wants me to know him and his love for me. But this doesn't mean that I will avoid hardships or the brokenness of my reality. It does mean that I will not be left alone in it. So last week, we began a series called Rhythms Over Resolutions, and we explored the difficulties of unrealistic resolution making and the powerful invitation of Scripture to find rhythms for our souls in Sabbath keeping and daily times where we can realign our hearts, our minds, and our motivations. As a recap, if you missed last week's episode, we discussed the first of four aspects of the rhythms of Sabbath, which was stop. And we discussed three reasons why stopping is actually essential for our spiritual and emotional success. For many, the idea of Sabbath can feel like an outdated religious practice or legalistic law. Yet Jesus revises this concept of Sabbath keeping in Mark 12. He reminds the people that Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. This changes everything because it makes Sabbath not about keeping a religious law, but about receiving a gift created by God for man. And this idea of living in resistance to the way of our world is very countercultural in so many ways, yet it is one of freedom that reorients us to our original design as God's creation. So today we are going to take a deeper look into what it means to rest. When we stop, to intentionally reconnect with God and honor our limits and detach from the world's motivation for success, we create the context for true rest. You see, to rest is to partake in how we were designed. 
Made in the image of God, we too, like God, are created to rest. Yet our culture has created a pervasive pattern of busyness that challenges us to keep up with demands to define our worth. And we have been convinced in many ways, I think, that our capacity is unending and we just need to plan more efficiently or strategize in a certain way to reach our ideal self. Yet what I often see and even have experienced myself is quite the opposite result. Instead of living the dream, our backwards way of thinking, I think, has left us in a chronic state of fatigue, burnout, depression, and anxiety. In losing the right to acknowledge our needs and limitations, we have disconnected ourselves from a vital aspect of our human nature. What I find so interesting about our inability to rest well as humans is that I truly think there is a misconception here that to rest is somehow wrong or selfish. It's lazy or unproductive. But I always ask this question, to what extent? There is a large difference between binge watching Netflix for three weeks straight versus taking a 24 hour period weekly to sleep in, eat good food, take a walk, a nap, enjoy a movie with friends, right? This is very different. And I truly believe that our willingness to engage in the rhythms God designed for us will determine our ability to experience abundant life. And what I mean by this is not getting all the things that we want in an earthly context, but fully experiencing the unmerited love and grace of God, which cannot be earned, won, or purchased apart from receiving it through Christ's work completed on the cross. This is good news. But does it feel like good news right now? For many, I believe it feels uncomfortable or unnatural, even unbiblical, to stop serving to rest. But when we look back at Jesus and what he modeled for us during his ministry is that he took time to rest, to pray, to find quiet places to recharge and acknowledge his needs with the Father. This is where I think we have to start when it comes to learning to build rhythms of rest in our life. It starts with acknowledging our neediness. What if I told you our needs were the very thing that made us human? Our needs are God-given and meant to be God-centered and God-satisfied. Yet what I find happens most is that in our world and in our relationships, we have learned to deny our needs or even dismiss them due to internalized messages or unstable attachment. We have found that to name our needs and limits may not be safe or not received well by others. So we resort to people pleasing or appeasing others and self-imposed pressures to pursue a version of ourselves that was never meant to be. The weariness you feel is because your body and its inherent God likeness was never meant to run on work alone. True rest is a remedy to our neediness. And God, from the beginning of time, invites us to partake in this gift. One that is not dependent on our performance or our attendance or even our good behavior, but invites us with this one condition. If you are weary, come find rest with me. I used to believe that I was too much. My emotions were too big. My personality was too large. My desire for deep relationship too much for others. Yet what I have come to learn and continue to learn is that these needs are part of how God wired me. What if our needs were actually the thing that brought us back to who we are? Like this ability to recognize our identity. Oh, those are my needs. I'm human, right? I think of this in context of therapy all the time because so many people come to therapy with frustrations about their spending or about their relational practices. And yet I always bring them back to this understanding that their actions are just avenues to meeting their God-given, God-sized needs. And we can readjust the way that we meet those needs and even create value alignment within them as we understand them as needs, valid and given by God. This is helpful for me and also for my clients to recognize that our divine nature will never be satisfied this side of heaven. So our needs draw us to the rhythm of rest, 
to coming home, to sitting down, to taking off the heavy yoke of this world and learning from the one who is gentle and lowly at heart. So today, friend, where are you feeling needs? How do you see yourself chasing for rest in the wrong places? And what are you looking to to find safety for your soul? These questions help us identify what God wants to meet in our lives. Embrace your new beginning with Freedom Federal Credit Union. Get started with a 0% APR for 15 months on visa balance transfers or apply for a debt consolidation loan for an APR as low as 4.99%. With Freedom Federal Credit Union, you can turn your pile of bills into one manageable payment. Learn more at freedomfcu.org. Annual percentage rates are subject to change at any time, and not all applicants will qualify for the lowest rate. Credit approval and membership eligibility requirements apply. For the full list of terms and disclosures, please visit freedomfcu.org. Hey everybody, I'm Dale. And I'm Tamara. We're hosts of the Kainos Project podcast. Where we help you tackle ancient Christian truths in everyday settings. To learn more and subscribe, go to lifeaudio.com. This weekend my pastor read a paraphrased version of the Beatitudes I had never heard before. And as I stood alongside my church family, hands open as I listened, my eyes welled with tears at the powerful truth of my blessedness. Not in my perfection, not in my self-sufficiency or my ability to get so many things done, but in my utter neediness, in my mourning and in my lacking. Jesus calls the state of humanness blessed For with eyes wide open, we can see God, experience his presence, attest to his goodness, and share in his kingdom inheritance. I want to read you these verses that I heard, and I pray that as you receive them, you too will be encouraged by the fact that you are indeed in need, and that draws us to Jesus. It says, when Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed a hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him The committed climbed with him. Arriving at his quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. And this is what he said. You are blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. You are blessed when you find you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You're blessed when you're content with just being who you are. No more, no less. That's the moment you find yourself proud owners of everything that can't be bought. You are blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink in the best meal you've ever had. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you find yourself cared for. You are blessed when you get your inside world, your heart and your mind put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. You are blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you've discovered who you really are and your place in God's family. And you are blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. What a gift this passage is to my heart, and I hope it is to yours as well. This practice of knowing our needs and seeing them as blessed helps us begin to practice rest. So I want to give you some just simple practices that can help in stopping and slowing down and learning how to take care of the needs that God has given us. Here are some simple practices for rest. Number one, R, we relax. We relax our bodies, our minds, our souls. We eliminate, E, the to-do lists. No work, paid or unpaid. We eliminate rushing. We eliminate doing. Anything that feels like work, we eliminate it. S, we sleep. Something that I've noticed specifically is that sleep helps us in all facets of our bodily needs, emotionally, spiritually, socially, intellectually, creatively, all of these areas, sleep is important. 
And this is why I think it's so interesting about Sabbath. The Sabbath starts on oftentimes on an evening and our first practice is sleep, right? We stop and then we sleep and then we move into the next movements of the day. And so encouraging naps and rest and just laying around even for a few hours can be really helpful for our body to reconnect with ourselves. And then time is the last one. Creating space, scheduling time in a day or a week or a moment, spending actual set aside scheduled time to do these practices. And these can be whatever you want them to be. I think it can be really challenging when we start thinking of rhythms and we think, well, I need to rest like this person rests or this is what rest looks like for them. So this is what I should do. And it's different for everybody. So I start with this practice of what are your needs? What feels like rest to you? What doesn't feel like rest to you? Let's use this ability to recognize our needs and then move towards them in a way that's compassionate and gracious. If what you need is to just sleep, then do that. If what you need is to go for a long run or to engage with people that fill you up and refresh you, then do that. It's all about taking small steps to acknowledging this gift that God has given us, rhythms of rest in our day. So I want to close this episode with a beautiful passage by Wayne Mueller. He writes this, he says, we can work without stopping faster and faster Electric lights making artificial day so that the whole machine can labor without ceasing. But remember, no living thing lives like this. There are greater rhythms that govern how life grows. Seasons and sunsets and great movements of seas and stars. We are part of a creation story subject to all its laws and rhythms. To surrender to the rhythms of seasons and the flowerings and dormancies is to savor the secret of life itself. Many scientists believe we are hardwired like this, to live in rhythmic awareness, to be in and then to step out, to be engrossed and then to detach, to work and then to rest. It follows then that the commandment to remember the Sabbath is not a burdensome requirement from some law-giving deity. You ought to, you better, you must, but rather a remembrance of the law that is firmly embedded in the fabric of nature. It is a reminder of how things really are, the rhythmic dance to which we unavoidably belong. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Therapy and Theology. If you have a question or topic you would like discussed on a future episode, please feel free to email me or drop it in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe to have each week's episode instantly downloaded to your podcasts and see the show notes for resources mentioned in this episode. To access more content and join my monthly email list for the latest updates and info, visit my website at carlymarkwilliam.com. Need more of God's power in your life? I'm Christina Patterson, host of the Teach Us to Pray podcast, providing practical tips on how to grow your faith through prayer. Subscribe at lifeaudio.com.